10th chapter, verse, verse 27. Let's look. This is, this is something that we're going to open up tonight. It says that Jesus, verse 27, and Jesus, hallelujah, say with me, amen. amen. Listen to what it says. Oh, and Jesus looking upon them said, with men it is impossible, but with God. Say with me, amen. amen. With God, all things are possible. All things, amen. With God, all things. Now, you have to believe in that word right there. You cannot take only a bit of the scripture and apply it because it won't work. You've got to take all the scripture. So he says, with men, it says, with men, some things, it says, all things are possible. Hallelujah. Amen. So why is it that some do not get delivered? Remember, we've been talking about deliverance for the last four Wednesdays, and they're all online. They're powerful. Why is it that some do not get delivered? Is it God's will that everyone be delivered? Yes, it is. Uh, with God, with men, all, with God, all things are possible. All things. Nothing missing. In other words, you can't say, well, you know, God will has me uh, carry this sickness because that's the way he wants me. No, you're just tricking yourself. In fact, the devil's lying to you. Amen. God will never do that. You know who will do it? Now, we know the enemy does that, but you know who gives freedom to do that? You. You allow the enemy to come into your life. And so the thing about this, the scripture says with, with God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. So in other words, the problem with not being delivered, number one, we're going to go through these quickly. Number one is lack of repentance. People do not want to repent from a disability. Now, remember the young rich ruler, Jesus, he came to Jesus one night. Listen to this. The young rich ruler came to Jesus one night, says, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus knew and perceived his thoughts and said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor. What did he do? He walked away sad, undelivered. Why? He didn't want to believe and repent. Jesus knew the thing that had him controlled was his money. Remember, he told him the, the law, but he said, I do that from a young age. I'd, I've been doing that, teacher. And Jesus says, now go sell everything you have. See, Jesus wanted to deliver him from wanting more access, excess. Amen. And I believe that if he would have been delivered, he would have took over Judas's place because he knew how to make money. And so the thing about Judas, Judas was a covetous man. And so Jesus knew this young rich ruler, young rich ruler, all he was after was covetousness or coveting things. So number one, there was a lack of repentance. Number two, there was a lack of desperation. No desperation brings deliverance. You have to desperately need God in your life. You've got to get to the place, a place in your life that is enough is enough. This is enough. No more. No more, Mr. Devil. No more. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. Amen. See, that's desperation. But the problem is too many people have passiv passivity. They, 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 want, they, want, they have a will, and the will is to keep it. Choice of will. Do you know God will never work against your will? God will never work against your will. He'll never force you to get healed. Although he desires you to get healed, he'll give you messages about getting healed. He'll send people your way about talking about getting healed. But he works with your will, your will. We choose, I choose to serve the Lord all the days of my life. And that's the way he operates. Hallelujah. Amen. Number three, look at it very quickly. Number three, write this down. Wrong motives. The reason why one needs to be delivered is so that he can worship the Lord freely. Amen. There can't be any wrong motives. In other words, James, the fourth chapter, uh, write this down, James. We're not going to turn there, but just hear it. James, the fourth chapter, verse 3, the apostle says, You ask a miss, and you receive not. And if you do ask, you want it for your own personal lusts. So in other words, wrong motives get in the way of being undelivered. 
wrong motives. You ask God for something and you say, God, I need this. God knows your motive. And if your motive is wrong, you'll not get it. Amen. And so we have to realize something. God wants us delivered, but it is wrong motives that will not get people delivered. Wrong motives. I want to be set free so that I can just be free. Why do you want to be free? So that I can be free. Why do you want to be free? So that I can just enjoy life. Well, that's the wrong motive. I want to be free to serve the Lord with all my life, all my heart. Hallelujah. Amen. It's like a woman coming to the altar one time and asked the preacher, preacher, please pray for my husband. He's an alcoholic and he doesn't serve the Lord. And, 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 and I just want him to know Jesus. And the preacher says, why do you want him to know Jesus? And she says, so that I can live happier. He said, wrong motive. Why do you want, why do you want Jesus in his life? She says, so he can serve you. That's the motive, serving you. Hallelujah, amen. Wrong motive sometimes gets in the way. Why are some undelivered? It's because self-centeredness have, has entered in. And you know, there are a lot of people that want attention. Do you know? People that need to be delivered live on attention. Live on attention. Attention, attention draws people to say, oh, how, how bad I feel for you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for you. Do you know the enemy breeds on that? Amen. Hallelujah. So in other words, self-centeredness has to be removed. Why is it some people want, won't get deliverance? It's because there's a, fra a failure to break from occultism. Occultism. And I'm going to tell you something about occultism. We have to realize that occultism now is hiding itself so strongly in things. And let me give you an example. Objects. You can have an object in your house that you don't realize you have. You can have a charm around your neck not knowing you had a charm. You can have a superstitious, a superstition that you probably had since you were a child. Or you probably look at your horoscope every morning. If you want to bring breakthrough in your life, stay away from anything that is demonic, anything that is triggered by the enemy. And all these things, I remember one time went to a house. They needed deliverance. They needed deliverance, and they would not get deliverance. Finally, the Lord told me to go to their home, visit them, and I want you to go in their bedroom. And I asked the couple, can I go into your bedroom? And they had over their bed, didn't realize that they had a big charm of the Aztecs calendar. And on that, they had everything of the calendar of the Aztecs, where even, it even had the calendars of, of giving of blood from, the, from sacrifices over their headboard. Couldn't get delivered, had nightmares. The Lord showed me, and I said, go throw that away. They threw it away, and guess what? They got delivered. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, sometimes we have things in our home that we have to recognize. Maybe you have some bad movies and, uh, laying around. Maybe you have some things that, that maybe some things that were wicked. Uh, you know, Ouija board. Maybe there's a Ouija board under your bed that you used to play, and you forgot about it. Well, ask the Lord to show you how to get rid of these things. Amen. Come on, church. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice this, we also have to realize there's a failure, uh, that why some are, in, uh, uh, are not delivered is because there's a failure to, to they, they failure to sever from evil, listen to this, evil soulish relationships. God will show you, maybe there's some evil soulish relationships that you've made contact with. Maybe there's some people that just are demonic and don't want to be delivered and they're your best friends. Amen. See, sometimes we have to recognize these things. The purpose of this is so that you can serve the Lord and so that he can minister to you so that you can break chains off other people. Amen. Hallelujah. Not for you to mix with them. You see, these are things why some people are undelivered. Failure to confess a specific sin. Do you know most people, when they confess a specific sin, that's the root. They know the root. They're the best choice. They're the best judges of their life. They know what they do in darkness. They know what they do behind closed doors. And once they confess it, then breakthrough happens. Hallelujah. Amen. Breakthrough happens. Hallelujah. Amen. Failure to confess a specific sin. The next thing we see is under a curse. Now, let me, let me just stop here for a moment. Go with me to Proverbs, the 26th chapter. Proverbs 26. And let me, let me just talk about this. this. This is something that we have to recognize. Every one of us have to recognize that we, we need, know to understand something. Things just don't happen because they want to happen. 
God is not the author. In fact, God does not make things happen to you that are evil. The enemy does. Now, notice what it says in Proverbs, the 26th chapter. I want you to look at this, and it says as a uh, verse 2. Look at this. Proverbs 26, verse 2. As the bird, by wandering, as the swallow, by flying. Now, so the curse causes shall not come. In other words, there is a cause that brings a curse. Just like the bird flies from his nest, just like you see the natural things taking place, a curse just doesn't happen simply because it wants to. Now, let me just say this now. If you're a believer, born-again believer, you're under the blood and you're protected from a curse. Now, I want you to understand that you're protected from a curse. But now the thing about this is if a curse has been placed on you and it is a consistent curse that is on you and you can't break through from it, then you have to recognize this curse came with a purpose. A curse came with a purpose. Amen. So in other words, curses have to be broken by choice. Amen. Now, once you get saved, you cannot be recursed. Once you get saved, you've got the blood. You're washed with the blood. Devil can't do anything to you, so understand that. Now, before salvation, curse was there. Curse was there, and you, and, and you mingled with it, and you recognized it, and you played with it, and you loved the Lord, and you played with it, and you loved the Lord, and you knew it was there. That's where you have to come to a point of choice. I choose to break this curse off my life. Amen, hallelujah. Curse can come in every different form, many different forms, hallelujah, amen. Now notice this, another reason is failure, or, or, or this is important. Why some are undelivered is because they have not been separated by water baptism. Water baptism. There are a lot of people that have been saved, but they don't choose to be water baptized because they don't believe in it. That opens the door for the enemy. Because the enemy doesn't understand the water baptism, and yet, or let me put it this way, he understands it, but he tries to get you not to understand it. I know many people get saved, and then all of a sudden, they get baptized, and in the baptismal pool, miracles happen. Things happen, hallelujah, amen? And let me just say this. If you were baptized as a little girl or a little boy, and you have no revelation of it, but now you're born again, and you say, Pastor, I've been baptized, but I have no revelation, then I encourage you, you can to, do, to do two things. And number one, receive revelation by faith and say, Father, I receive it. Or number two, get revelation and say, Father, I choose to go back into the baptismal pool. Amen. Go back into the baptismal pool. If you were baptized and told by your mom and daddy to get baptized and you had no, you had no revelation of it, you just did it because you were obedient. But now you, now that you're a born again believer, now you understand and you say, Father, I want to go back into the baptismal pool. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. Amen. Now, this is very important. Understand this. The 10th, the 10th point, why some are undelivered is because there is a part larger there's a larger battle that they have to understand that requires corporation or corporate action i'm going to say there's a large battle that you're going through that has to take corporate action what does that mean pastor let me give you a good example you can be sitting under a, a, a church that may be the pastors in sin and you don't know it and you get messages every Sunday from this pastor, and really he's not changed. He's, he's not true, so what is he doing? He's releasing to you spiritual things. It's a corporate battle. So in other words, corporately one has to go into some warfare. That's why if you've been under a teaching that is erroneous or, or, or in error, listen, it is a corporate issue. Many people are under this thing, so they have to be set free. Come on, church. That's why it's so important to, to know the word and to know who you're sitting under and to understand the word of God. There's too much wild stuff happening out there. There's too much evil stuff happening out there. From the pulpit. It's a sad thing. And people every day are under this. And they don't understand why they can't get delivered. I don't know why I can't deliver from lust. Can, I don't understand why I can't deliver, can get delivered from perversion. Can understand why we're always having marital problems. Well, <laughs> maybe there's more than just you in the church that's having problems. Maybe there's a lot of people in the church having that same problem. 
And can I tell you something? I knew, I knew of some couple, a couple that was a pastor had immorality in their life. And do you know many of their church members got divorced? Many of them got divorced. Why? Because of a stem that happened. Corporate battle, corporate action. That's to take place. Amen. Come on, church. Look at me like, amen. Say with me, amen. This happens. This is nothing new. There's so much can, that can take place here. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let's look at something, and this is where I want to really focus on how to keep your deliverance. We just, we just finished why some are undelivered. That's very important. Now, how to keep your deliverance. Number one, write this down. You have to make Jesus the Lord of your life on a continuing basis. All right, I'm going to show you something very important found in Matthew. So found in Matthew. This is going to set you free. This is going to allow you to continue staying free when you are delivered. You're going to understand this. Now, notice what it says. That's why it's so important. That's why as a pastor, I'm always encouraging you. Get in the house of the Lord. Get in the house of the Lord. Stay in the word. Stay in the word. There's reasons for this. Now, notice what it says in Matthew, the 12th chapter. Look at verse 43. The whole chapter is powerful, but focusing on how to keep to do your deliverance. Verse 43 says, when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man. Are you there? When an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, neuter gender, mankind, he walketh through Dry places, that's where you cast him. Dry places, places, seeking rest and finding none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. Notice this, my house, he took ownership, but he was kicked out. I will return to my house where I came out of, and when he is come, he finded it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man or mankind is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. In other words, he says, as it was when I spoke it, it'll happen in the generations to come. Now, what does that mean? Meaning that if we become delivered, if you become delivered from something, you got to keep your house full, not only cleansed, but full, don't it? Now, notice this. What God does, he empties that house. Now, when he empties that house, he allows you, not him, you, to fill that house with the word of God. You fill that house, not him, you. He comes to give you the word by pastor, by messages, by songs, by, by the word of God. He brings you furnishings. He brings you garnishment. He brings you things to fill your spiritual house, your body, your spirit man. But if it's empty, listen, that spirit that left, that owned residence once was there, that the residence that he once owned now is rebuked into the desert. And I like that. We chase demons into the desert. Chase them into the desert, the uninhabited places. The Bible says that's where they go. But they converse. They, they have conversation. They say, you know what? That was my home. That was my home. That was my home. But you know what? I'm going to go back and find out if, they, if, if it's still clean for me. And listen to this. If it goes back and finds that the soul that it left or the, or the household that it left, if it finds it empty, then it brings in seven more wicked than itself seven more that means there's an increase of wickedness now do you believe this church do you believe this this is what the word of god says that's why how to keep one delivered is to always and in fact let's let's look into more let's let's look into keeping the garment of praise on amen worshiping the lord come on church worshiping the lord praising god sitting under anointed teaching, worshiping the Lord, filling that house. Hallelujah. Amen. Putting on the garment of praise. Number two, garment of praise should be on in your life. Hallelujah. Number three, put on the full armor of God. The full armor of God. Don't get up and leave the house without the armor. Put on the full, the full. Say with me, the full armor of God. 
The full armor of God, you put that on, hallelujah, amen? And it's found in Ephesians, write this down. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 14 through 17, talks about the armor. I love putting on the armor of God. When we pray, we put on the armor of God. Some people say, well, pastor, you should always have it on. Yeah, you should always have it on. Yeah, you should have it always on. But it's so good to rem remind yourself that you're continually putting it on. Remind yourself. Keep the armor of God on, hallelujah, amen? Praise God. Number four, listen to this. How to keep your deliverance, live by God's word. Get the word, live by it. Live by the word. Let the word dictate to you how to live. Set the foundation, the word, the foundation in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Get the word out when things don't look good. Get the word out when you're getting broke. Get the word out when you're feeling sick. Get the word out when you're having family problems. Get the word out when your car breaks down. Get the word out when things are happening all around you. Get the word. That's what the word's for. Hallelujah. Amen. And notice this, point number five is submit to God and resist the devil. Submit to God, James 4, 7. In fact, I'm going to read it to you from the message. I love it from the message. See if I can get the message here. Hallelujah. Uh, what did I say it was? Thank you. <laughs> All righty, let me go to the message Bible. Oh, Jesus, he's so good. Amen. James what? All right, thank you, so I can find it. The Message Bible in James 4, 7 says this. Listen to what it says. It says, so let God work his will in you. Amen. Now, notice this. this is, I love this, this, this translation. Yell a loud no to the devil and watch him scamper. <laughs> Amen. Say, listen to this. Say a quiet yes to God. Say a quiet yes to God and he'll be there in no time. Quit dabbling in sin. Purify your inner life. Quit playing the field. Hit, quit playing the field. Hit bottom and cry out your eyes to the Lord. You know what he's simply saying? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Resist the devil and he will flee. In other words, the translation says, say it a little louder. Devil out. Say it a little louder. Devil out. Say it with me. Devil out. Devil out. See, there's sometimes you have to just say it out loud. Yeah. You know, when we pray and we pray in the Holy Ghost, have you ever, now, listen everybody, have you ever heard your pastor say, now come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Say it a little louder. Get a little louder. And you probably, some of you get a little upset, say, well, you know what, he doesn't have to tell me how to pray. You know, you know why the pastor encouraged you to pray a little louder? so that you can hear the spirit of man in you, that you can hear the spirit of God in you rather than hearing the voice of the enemy. The voice of the enemy has been speaking too loud all day long anyway. You got a mean doctor, you got a mean boss, you got an ugly person at work has been speaking loud over years. So you need to hear yourself praying the Holy Ghost. Say with me, hallelujah. Amen. So when we pray in the Holy Ghost, don't patty cake. Don't pray little cotton balls. Just get serious about praying. When we rebuke the devil, don't just say, well, I just rebuke you, devil. No, say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Take authority over it. Hallelujah. Amen. Take authority. Amen. Don't patty. Don't, 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 don't play cotton ball prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. Get serious. When you're in war and you're fighting, boy, what do you do? You shout, ha. Hallelujah. Amen. When the children of Israel were told to scream and shout around the walls of Jerusalem, did they go, oh, Jesus, oh, Lord? No, they screamed, hallelujah, and the walls crumbled, hallelujah, amen? So we have to recognize that, amen? Now, let's go back and let me, let's look at uh, point number six, right fellowship. Have the right fellowship. First John, the fourth chapter, verse seven. Have the right fellowship. Separate yourself from wrong fellowship. Wrong fellowship gets you nowhere. Get right fellowship. Being among the body of Christ sharpens you. Being among the body of Christ strengthens you. Have you ever noticed that? Now, let's be real. Have you ever noticed when you hang around spirit-filled people faith, of faith, they build you up? But when you hang around ungodly people, somehow it just gets on you. And if you're not strong, you become a little ungodly. You kind of think a little bad. But, you see, that's why you need, we need to build ourselves always. So, so the, how to keep your deliverance? If you are being delivered at this point, keep right fellowship with born-again believers. Amen. Hallelujah. Point number seven, come under discipline. Yeah. We're in a church. God gives us discipline. 
Now, I want you to understand something. Discipline is important from the word of God. In fact, uh, let, let's, let's talk about 1 Samuel. Write this down, 1 Samuel, the 15th chapter, verse 23. 1 Samuel 15, 23. This is a story of Sa uh, Samuel. We find the story of Samuel here. In fact, let's just go ahead there quickly. Right? First, first Samuel, let's look at it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Jesus, so good. 1 Samuel, the 15th chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, remember, to keep your deliverance, stay under authority. Now, let me just read to you. God told Samuel. In the voice of the Lord behold to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams the reason why he's saying this is because Saul used an excuse well we saved him to offer unto you a sacrifice he disobeyed God God said you destroy everything and he says but the people they did it well no you're responsible everything falls on leadership right verse 23 listen to what it says for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry listen listen to this listen to what he says because thou has rejected the word of the lord he hath also rejected thee from being king so in other words he lost his kingship because of two things rebellion right rebellion and what stubbornness I want you to understand something. In order for you to keep your deliverance, you've got to be under authority and get rid of stubbornness. Get rid of being hard-headed. Hard Come on, church. There's a lot of people that are sitting under pastors, and, and, and they're stubborn in their ways. They're stubborn. They're stubborn. They're stubborn. They're stubborn. Jesus says if they're stubborn, they are like witchcraft. Come on, church. Listen, before God, stubbornness is witchcraft. That means he doesn't see you stubborn. He sees you as a witch operating in craft. Come on, church. This is serious. Are you listening to me, church? Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Get a hold of this. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, notice what it says here. Stubbornness. In fact, let me read it again because I, I, I like to see this, and I want you to see this. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Listen, parents, listen to me, parents. You got rebellion, rebellion in your children? Deal with it now. Because the day is going to come that God is going to hold them accountable, also you, but them, and the day when they grow up, if they don't understand uh, teachable spirits, so if they don't understand being in, in, in subordination to, to authority, then they're going to have to deal with it in their life. We have a generation today that is stubborn and rebellious and, oh, why? Pastor, why is it? Because they've never been taught when they were young. Come on, church. That's why as a father, you, as, as a father can I talk to the fathers here? Fathers, you have the right to tell your children. Children, I'm telling you, listen to your father right now. I, I'm telling you, listen. Teach them to obey the parents. Mothers, teach your children to obey. Members of the church, listen. Obey your pastor. Yes. Obey your pastor. <laughs> I have to say that. Amen. Obey your pastor. Don't be stubborn when your pastor says something. Don't be stubborn. God looks at it as witchcraft. So in other words, to keep your deliverance Trust the, authority, the authoritative structure in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, church. That is not a used thing today. Hallelujah. Amen. But I have to tell you the truth. Amen. Now, how to keep your deliverance. Point number eight. Right? Make Jesus central in your life. Central. Central. You be right in the middle of Jesus. Get Jesus all around you. 
Make Jesus. Listen, when you're traveling a long distance in a car, get Jesus with you in the car. When you're going to the store, get Jesus. Think about Jesus and everything you do. Why? Because he wants to be cent the centerpiece of your life. C can you say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Now notice this. Notice the order. Notice the order. Jesus drives out Satan. Satan never drives out Jesus. Very simple. Notice the order. Jesus drives out Satan. Satan does not drive out Jesus. Now, notice this. This is what he thinks he can do. He thinks he can drive Jesus out of you. And if you think he can, then he's intimidating you. And this is where many people live today. They are intimidated by Satan. They do not uh, 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 want Jesus in their life. I heard people say, well, every time I think about worshiping or going to church, listen, every time I think about worshiping or going to Jesus, I get a tax. Come on, church. That's the biggest lie of the devil. Amen. Don't ever, let, don't ever say that. Don't ever think that. Say, no, when I go to church, I get delivered. I'm set free. Jesus is my Lord. Hallelujah. Devil, you look at it. I'm going to church right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. I know people say, oh, don't, don't pray for me. Don't pray for me. Because, because the moment you pray, it seems like I get more attacked. Well, that's just it. You don't believe in prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, notice this. These are things that will help us in keeping our deliverance. Amen. In other words, how to keep your deliverance is understanding what you're being delivered from. Amen? And how to keep the, uh, yourself free from this is trusting that God does these things. Amen? God does these things. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you believe in freedom? Yeah. Amen? Do we believe in freedom? Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen? Say with me, I'm free. I'm free. Now, now, in Jesus' name. What did you just do? You confess freedom by faith. I'm free now. Now, you may, be, you may be a person that needs deliverance tonight, but if you say, Jesus, I'm free now, what are you doing? You're confessing him. You're saying, Father, I'm free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let's stand up. Jennifer, come to the piano real quickly. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, notice, this is what the Lord said today. Today, do this. Do this today. Do they, you know, I was in a hotel in January in Fort Worth, Texas, getting ready for a pastor's conference. And the Lord started speaking to me. And that night, he showed me an open dream. And he said, I'm going to reinforce the church. And when he said that, I understood something. Now, I didn't tell you the rest of the dream. I'm going to tell you right now. The rest of this dream was, now, I used to work with metal. Bobby may understand, or people that understand metal may understand this. If you want to make metal strong, what do you do? You get it hot, red hot, and you dip it in a chemical. In some cases, oil mixed with water, and in some cases, just pure water. Varsol may be sometimes, I remember my father would do that. When he made me a crowbar, every crowbar I was bending, and uh, he said, I'll make you a crowbar and it'll never bend. And sure enough, it never bent. Never bent. This thing never bent. I asked my papa, I said, uh, my, my father, I said, Father, how did you do that? He says, I had to get the metal so hot. He said this, I spent most of the time getting the metal hot to get it red, red hot. Red, red hot. So red, so red. And I immediately stuck it into a mixture. And it was sizzling. And that's how I got it. And the Lord of that night, that vision or that open dream in, in Fort Worth, Texas, he showed me three bars of steel. And in those bars of steel, he said that I'm putting electricity to it and it's going to get so hot, so hot, so hot, so hot that I'm going to pour oil on it. And he said, you know what happens? And I thought immediately about my fall loss. Yes, I know what you're saying, Lord. He said, that's what I'm doing to the body of Christ this hour. And notice this, that means he's tempering us. That means he's, he's, he's causing us to go back to the basics to understand where we might have got off track, where we might have got off trail. Before we can go further on, God says, I want to deliver. I want to deliver. I want to deliver my people. And he showed me people in church worshiping the Lord full of demonic activity. Worship him. And he says, do you see they're raising their hands? I don't hear from them. I don't hear from them. And I said, Lord, I know what you mean. 
As a pastor, I examine myself. As a pastor, I examined every one of you. I prayed for every one of you. And I see weaknesses. I see things in this house. I see things that, that you know what you deal with. You know. You know. But it's surfaced. It's surfaced. Things have surfaced. I've seen the, the, the outer manifestations of things that are deep inside the heart. I've seen that. And God says, you know what? Basics. They got to go back to the basics. They got to go back. And I've got to work on them in a greater way. I'm going, to, I'm going to just fire them up to be strong. I'm bringing them, I'm, 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 I'm bringing them again to this place that they can become strong. So when they do call upon me, I know them. So when they do witness to others, I know them. Hallelujah. Amen. And notice this. As a pastor, I bring this to you. So we're going to pray some things. We're going to pray some things. Remember. In one, of the, in one of the series we talked, Jesus expelled them, expelled them, expelled them. You know what that means? He calls them to breathe out. <sighs> you remember that, story, that study? <sighs> he expelled them. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. And there are things that you're going to release. Now, I'm going to, uh, we sat by the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost showed me things that we needed to, like, to write down. He said, I want you to write these down. And as you speak them, they will know what needs to come out. They will know. Now notice this. We're here tonight to be set free. Come on, church. We're here tonight to be set free. We're going to go higher with God. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to go higher with God. Ministries are going to birth. Things are going to happen. Breakthroughs in our lives are going to take place. Miracles are happening. The church explosion is going to take place. Hallelujah. Amen. Because, see, we're people that God is solidifying, making us stronger. Hallelujah. Amen. And notice this. We go before the Lord. I want you to say this with me. Every eye closed, every head bowed in reverence to the Lord right now. Let's believe for deliverance tonight. Believe for deliverance. Amen. Everyone believe for deliverance tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. I want everybody in this room. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody in this room. Everybody, hallelujah, amen. Oh, Jesus, come on. Let's get ready for more of God. Hallelujah, amen. Go before the Lord and tell the Lord, Lord, I I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm tired of this thing that has, 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 has controlled me. I'm tired of it. Come on. Are you tired? Do you want to get delivered? Do you want to be set free? Do you want to be set free? Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Let's, let's allow God to deliver us and set us free. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus, you're so real. You're so real. You're so real. You're so real. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. In the name that is above every name, the name Jesus. Jesus, I thank you for tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Just keep praying. Katie, go ahead. Leave the cameras. Just zoom in. I'm not going to move. I promise. I want you to take a place. Come sit next to Pastor 2. All of us need this. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Let's, let's call everybody in the house. Come on. Bring Teresa and Andrew. Baby Sophia. Katie. Hallelujah. I want no one to miss this. No one to miss this. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Jesus, we give you praise. Jesus, I thank you for tonight. In Jesus' name. Focus on the Lord. Focus on the Lord. Focus on the Lord. Focus on the Lord. <laughs> Focus on the Lord. Come on, Andrew, get up here quick. Focus on the Lord. Hallelujah. Ribo shakatara basata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just feel that everyone needs to be in this room. Everyone, everyone, everyone. Everyone. Hallelujah. This is important. I want everybody to agree with me and say this right now. Jesus Christ, I believe you're the Son of God. And you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I come to you for mercy and forgiveness now I come with you to you with this problem 
Come on, say it. With this problem. Lord, I ask you this very moment. Forgive me. I'm tired of hiding it. Forgive me. Now, Father, I forgive those that have hurt me in life. Now, right now, say that person's name in your heart. Forgive that person. There, there, there's people in here that are holding bondages right now because of unforgiveness. Go ahead and release that person. Release mama, daddy, whoever it may be. Just release them. Release daughter, son, whatever it may be. Release that person. Just say, Father, I release them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. The Holy Spirit is showing you right now. Hallelujah. Now say with me, Father, now, I forgive them. I release them. Now, I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me from all rebellion. Come on, say it all out. Forgive me from all rebellion. Forgive me from all anger. Lord, forgive me right now. Father, I come to you and I receive the blessing. The blessing. I receive the blessing now in my life. Now. Say this, I come against the spirit that has come on me. I come against that right now. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Here, turn this thing off quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, amen. I come against the spirit that has come on me now. I rebuke it out of my life now. In the authority of Jesus Christ, I command them to leave now. I command them to leave now. Now go ahead and expel right now. In Jesus' name. Now right now, I'm going to call some things out that the Spirit of the Lord says, and you're going to recognize it. You're going to recognize it. Hallelujah. Amen. You're going to recognize it. In Jesus' name. Father, I come against stubbornness right now. Stubbornness. Go. If that's you, go ahead and expel it right now. <sighs> I come against selfishness. If that's you, expel it. Come on. You know yourself. I come against that right now in Jesus' name. I come against unfaithfulness now. I come against confusion, distraction. Can't concentrate. I come against the spirit of laziness. I come against the spirit of timidity, intimidation, fear. I come against the spirit of haughtiness. Come against the spirit of temptation. Come against the spirit of ancestral idolatry. I come against religious soul ties. Now remember, you're, you're expelling them right now. You're recognizing them. Just expel them right now. Hallelujah. I come against inconsistence. Exaggeration. Spirit of competition, come out. Pilfering, come out. Stealing in small amounts, come out. Hidden anger, come out. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor Christine, would you go get those children? Their mama's trying to pray. And, and, and go ahead and stand with them. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Oh, church, hallelujah. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Don't look at mama. Don't look at the babies. Come on, just pray in the Holy Ghost. Right now in the name of Jesus. I come against anger, spirit, anger. Now leave in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and expel it. You drive in spirit. This spirit is a driving spirit that causes you to do things that you should not do. I command you, leave now in Jesus' name. Spirit of addiction, go. Spirit of gluttony, go. Spirit of greed, go. Harassing spirit, go. Expel it right now. Harassing spirit, go. Hallelujah. Condemning spirit, go. Prideful spirit, go. Phony spirit, go. Self-pity, go. Drama spirit, go. Argumentative spirit, go. Uncleanliness, go. Expel it right now. Whining, go in Jesus' name. Infirmity, spirit of infirmity, go now in Jesus' name. Generation infirmity, generation that causes a generational curse, go in Jesus' name. Expel it. Impure thoughts now, go in Jesus' name. Lust, lusting after things, go you foul spirit 
unkind attitude. Go in the name of Jesus. Self-indulgent. Go. Withdrawal from the body. Go. Abuse of all kinds. Expel it now. Abuse. Go in the name of Jesus. Destructive spirit. Go. Go. Suicidal spirit. Go in the name of Jesus. Calamity. Accident prone. Go in the name of Jesus. Generational witchcraft. Meddling with spirit of darkness in your generation. Go now in the name of Jesus. Hatred. Go. Murdering spirits in the mind. Go in the name of Jesus. Perversion. Go. And Father, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. I forgive. I forgive you, Jesus, because you forgave me. I thank you, Jesus. I give you praise in the name of Jesus. And notice this. This is deliverance. This is being set free. You're tired of it. No longer will have it. It's out. It's gone. Never again. Never again to hinder you. Never again to hinder you any longer. Never again to hurt you. Never again. Whom the Son, listen to this, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Tonight, tonight, 8.20 tonight, on a Wednesday, March, hallelujah, what's today's date? 20th, you're set free March 20th. Come on, remember, March 20th, 8.20, I've been set free. Oh, I've been set free. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a worship and praise. I've been set free. I've been set free. I've been set free. Never again to return. I've been set free. Now notice this. God said that he will perform what he so sets to do. The word of God will prove to be true. From this moment on, you fill your life with the word. You fill it with worship. You fill it with loving God. Oh, and the Holy Spirit we're gonna, is going to catch you and just, just, just convict you strong in things. And you're going to say, yes, sir. I'm under authority. I'm under authority, my Lord. Thank you, Lord, for showing me I'm under authority. And I honor you. Tonight, listen to me, everyone here. Look at my eyes right now, everyone. You're free. You're free. You're free. Amen. You're free. You're free. You're free. You're free. How can I say that? Because I believe the word. Amen. You're free. You're free. Tonight, if Jesus Christ was to come this very moment, we go before him. We stand with a clean vessel. Hallelujah. Amen. Clean vessel in knowing the Lord. But notice this. We continue this atmosphere in every day. As we go, we continue in this atmosphere. We continue thanking God. Thank you, Lord, that my house has been swept tonight. Now it's full with the word. It's full of the presence of God. No word in you no power invites seven more to come back you don't want that why because you know just alone you've had trouble not with seven more I don't want seven more I don't want my last seven more worse than it was before deliverance I want it free and it's gonna stay free amen come on church lift your hands and praise the lord hallelujah father we thank you lord we thank you jesus we thank you let me talk to those that, as you're worshiping the lord come on continue worshiping the lord let me talk to those that are viewing by telecast you too can have your deliverers today just believe the word of god there's no there's no distance in time in the spirit what you're hearing this very moment can happen to you. It can happen to you. As you hear this message, just call upon the Lord. If any one of these things have you been under, go ahead and expel it. Go ahead and re just release it. 
release it. All these categories, release it. And the Lord will set you free like he set many here free today. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, I'm free. Hallelujah, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Hallelujah. I'm free. I'm free, Jesus. I'm free. I'm free. Hallelujah. I'm free. Oh, Jesus. How many people believe in timing? In great timing. Wonderful timing. There's a reason why this happened today. And you'll know why. You'll know why. Amen? So give the Lord a praise. Timing is beautiful. <laughs> Amen? You'll know why. You'll know why. Because there's breakthrough now coming into your life. I believe it with all my heart. Breakthrough has come. Answered prayers that you've been standing on are going to happen quicker. Amen? Hallelujah! Things are going to happen quicker. Oh, when you believe the Lord. When you believe the Lord, things are going to happen. You say, Pastor, it's happening now. Yes, it's happening now. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm free. <laughs> I'm free. I'm free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we give you praise and glory. Oh, Jesus. You are so perfect. Your time is impacted. Jesus thank you Lord for giving us this understanding giving us wisdom showing us Lord and Father we govern our life by your word oh I'm a believer I'm a spirit filled believer and I am truly a Christian unto you. I'm Christ like and Lord as I go throughout this, this week, let me be a light to those around me. Let me pray for them and pull them from the bands of wickedness. Jesus, anoint my life to do your first and final commission. You commission us, Lord. You taught the disciples what to do. And now you're teaching us. So, Father, thank you for your commission. And thank you for the basics of deliverance. Basics of deliverance. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Amen.